am the bread of life. I am the hope in night. I am the door wide open. I am the shepherd's might. I am the truth and light. I am the way and life. I am who am and I am for you. Come and follow me. I am bread for the world, hope for the hopeless. Come to me and know that I'll always be there. With my arms open wide, I am who am and I am for you. Come and follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate such a beautiful feast, the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, traditionally known as Corpus Christi. And uh, uh, well, what, a, what a beautiful celebration in the sense that body of Christ, the physical body of Christ in the Eucharist is the thing so many have longed to be able to receive these uh, many weeks that we've not been able to be together in church. And while I wish we were in church today, I am happy to say that we will be in church starting tomorrow. And at the end of Mass, I'll give a little more information about that. But um, in our hunger for the Eucharist, the Eucharist that we've lacked uh, physically over these months, uh, let that hunger open our minds to the Lord and remind us that our desire was perhaps greater than we realized. And the many graces of God are greater, greater than we realize. And our needs for my, God's mercy as well is greater than we realized. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments? He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph, serpents, and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever to you, my God, throughout all time. I will sing to you throughout all time. I will sing to you. I will sing forever to you, my God, throughout all time. I will sing to you. Throughout all time, I will sing to you. I will sing of your love all my days, O oh God. Your faithfulness is forever. You are love everlasting and compassion stronger than the sky. I will sing forever to you, my God, throughout all time. I will sing to you throughout all time. I will sing to you. The heavens proclaim your wonders. The stars above tell of your love. Where is there an equal? What God can compare with you? I will sing forever to you, my God, Throughout all time, I will sing to you. Throughout all time, I will sing to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord.
loves me will keep my word, says the Lord. The Father will love him and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Like most children, I was pretty inquisitive when I was very young. And like some children, I probably drove my family and others crazy with questions. You see, if I asked a question of an adult, a simple, short answer would never suffice. I always seemed to have a follow-up question, and most of those questions had the magic word, why, in them. Now, if I asked why enough times in succession, I would get one of two responses. Sometimes the one word answer, because, which was an adult way of saying, stop asking me so many questions. But every once in a while, I would actually get a much more thorough and complicated adult answer to my question. And because I was a child, those answers were usually beyond what I was able to grasp. And I would often find myself thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, it's not just children who can feel this way. We probably all do, depending on what our interests and gifts are. Some of us find high-level math virtually impossible to comprehend. Some find chemistry, biology, or physics to be complete gibberish. Some of us try to learn to read music or play an instrument and soon quit as we are astounded that others can make any sense of it. And sometimes the choices and decisions of others can leave us dumbfounded as to why they did what they did or even said. Lastly, sometimes even the unfolding of our lives can seem to make little sense. And if we are being totally honest, we'd have to admit that religion and faith can sometimes appear to be a little nonsensical at times and can push the boundaries of our own reason, intelligence, and personal experience of this world. Sometimes the things we are asked to believe in faith can leave us asking, how in the world is that possible? And this is nothing new. Even Doubting Thomas was reluctant to believe what his friends were telling him. He was reluctant because he hadn't seen it with his own eyes. And while we don't know that much about the very early first century church outside of what's spoken in the Acts of the Apostles, one thing is almost almost certain. 
that many people who first heard the story of Jesus probably had a very hard time accepting what they had been told. Again, at a certain level, it just didn't make sense. Well, today we gather to celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. And we are asked to believe some pretty incredible things about what happened at this table, things that we may never be able to fully understand. And that's okay. You see, we shouldn't shy away from confusion, doubts, or wondering that might bring disconnects into our minds. It is precisely in the wondering that we can come to a deeper understanding and a deeper love and appreciation of our faith. And in a very real sense, there will always be a part of the Eucharist that will remain a mystery, something that we can struggle to make sense of. But there are ways for this sacred meal to make a little more sense, to become a little more real and meaningful, to be beautiful, a beautiful encounter with God as it is meant to be. So how will it make more sense? Well, it makes a lot more sense if we believe that our God loves us unconditionally, completely, and relentlessly. And it makes a lot more sense if we believe that our God doesn't want to remain at a distance, but rather wants to be close to us, dwell in us, and commune with us. It makes a lot more sense if we believe deeply in the incarnation and therefore believe that God doesn't come to us in some vague way, but in concrete, tangible ways, that he comes to us not despite the things of this world, but precisely through the things of this world. And it certainly makes more sense if we see God as the one thing we need more than any other. In other words, the real necessity that God is what each of us is truly hungering for. So every time we kind of struggle with believing in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, it might be somewhat helpful to imagine ourselves sitting on our deck, looking out at a peaceful backyard with no wind, not even a leaf moving, everything at a complete standstill. And then remember, the deep reality of what the earth is really doing, the reality that we are unable to detect, the earth spinning at some 20,000 miles an hour. And in a certain sense, that's not unlike this Eucharistic meal. We see one thing, we taste one thing, but we are asked to trust, hope, and believe in something that goes far beyond our senses, a reality so profound so beautiful, and so life-changing. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. This sacrament is not something we strive to understand or comprehend, but rather to be someone we strive to become. It is the bread that is Jesus' compassion and the wine that is his generosity that sustains us where we constantly rediscover the presence of God in our midst, in the love of family and friends. Jesus' words about his flesh and blood as real food challenge us to consider what sustains us as human beings, as loving parents and sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, as children of God with whom we share this good earth. So after three months of yearning but not being able to receive the body and blood of Christ, our churches will reopen for daily mass starting Monday, June 15th. So will you be at the Lord's table with the spirit of gratitude to rejoin your community of faith? If not, I have a question. Why or why not? Hopefully your response would not be because, but that you would have a more thoughtful and adult answer in receiving the body and blood of Christ. God bless you. Let us proclaim our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, God light from light, light true, true God from true God, God begotten, not, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ offers us life-giving bread and a chalice of salvation that we might share in his sacrifice and live for others. With hope to bring, we lift up our prayers. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops and priests called to minister the body and blood of our Lord, that they may always pattern their ministry after Christ's humility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we may work together in love and strive to one day be united around the Lord's table. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hunger and thirst, that the poor who struggle to find sufficient food and drink may be satisfied with dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grow our food, for farmers, farm workers, migrant workers, and for all those who package and deliver it, enabling us to serve it at our tables, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an end to every kind of prejudice and hate in our society, for healing, justice, and reconciliation, for all those that have experienced so much suffering, especially in these most recent days, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our healthcare workers, our first responders, and all of our servicemen and women who guard our freedom throughout the world, and for all the prayers in our parish intention book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, that the Lord may strengthen them, especially Frank Maricanti, <clears throat> Albert Marisco, Kathy Headley, Chris Barrow. Lucia Chia, Chia Gallon, Catherine Schwartz, Doris Paisler, and for those who are critically ill due to the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died recently, especially Kathy Pontillo, Bill Riley, Kathy Busolato, Catherine Fitzpatrick, Regina Winsick, Cipriano Avelis, Mary Ribich, and for Patrick and Margaret Kelly, whom we remember at this Eucharist in a special way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died recently as a result of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the living bread come down from heaven who promises to raise us up on the last day. On our pilgrimage of life, sustain us with your presence. Through your precious body and blood, may all the world see the gift of your wondrous love, who live and reign forever and ever. God of all the hungry millions, God who suffers with the poor, 
Still our greed keeps us from sharing with the hungry at our door. All who thirst will thirst no longer when we do as you would do. May we care for all your people. Help us know that they are you. God who loves the sick, the dying, they are precious in your sight. We will bring them your compassion, fill their living with your light. God who brings the captives freedom, free our hearts to love anew. May we comfort all your people, help us know that they are you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Andrew and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, peeled him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now I invite you to join in the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Miracle of grace, mystery of faith, calling us to venture to the deep. Though our senses fail, your grace is still prevail, and we become the love that we receive. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life, your true presence in this holy sacrifice, bread of life, bread of life. you presence in this holy sacrifice, bread of life, bread of life. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I forgot to mention at the beginning of Mass that we, uh, as we began, we really had the chance to enjoy a beautiful slideshow, all photos of uh, two weeks ago on Pentecost Sunday when we had the drive-through and the blessing of people who came through, and that was our first face-to-face encounter, though even at a distance in quite some time, and what a great thing. And then, as I said at the beginning of Mass uh, also, that um, we will begin uh, on Monday, uh, Monday, June 15th, we'll resume our regular Mass schedule. So well, Monday through Saturday, we'll have Mass at 9 a.m., and we'll resume our regular weekend schedule, at least tentatively hope to do that, 5 p.m. Vigil Mass on Saturday, 8 o'clock, 10.30, and 12.15 p.m. on Sunday, and 7 p.m. on Sunday in Spanish. Uh, we will live stream at least one English Mass, most likely the 5 p.m., but uh, it remains to uh, be negotiated. Um, on Monday through Friday, we'll have uh, the church will be open uh, after Mass for a little while, till like 10.30 or so, uh, for private prayer. And uh, the, the noon to three uh, opening, will, that will be that, that. That won't take place anymore. Tomorrow, uh, Sunday, is the, the last day for that. And um, confessions, uh, the, the church will be open for prayer at 3 p.m. until the beginning of Mass at 5 p.m. on Saturday, next Saturday, and with confessions at 4 o'clock, going back to the old schedule. Um, all that is already in the bulletin. It's online. You can look for it on the website or on the Facebook page. And it was all in the um, constant contact email we sent the other day. And we'll re- send something more this week with more details. Um, we have a limited number. You know, only I think less than 50 people can be in church during this these weekdays. So for some, I don't expect to have more than that. Uh, we're already set up for social distancing this week. Um, so for some reason, we randomly have 52 or 55. We'll probably have to turn a few away. So don't be insulted, but I think we'll probably be okay numerically. And we'll give you instructions when you get there, but be sure to bring your mask. You must be wearing a mask. Bring sanitizer. We have some if you don't have any, but try and remember sanitizer. And we'll give you instructions around receiving Holy Communion, how to do that in the the most comfortable and the most secure way. Um, Next weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, we'll have our, we'll enter phase three. And uh, we're waiting during the week to receive a final instruction on how many people we can physically have in church, then we'll let you know as soon as we know, but uh, I hope it'll all work out. We're not planning to do an online reservation system because it just seems more complicated than the possible benefits. So if we need to over time, we will, but if for some reason next uh, Sunday ends up being crazy and we have all kinds of people trying to get to a single mass, then again, we ask you to be patient and generous if you get turned away. Um, But hopefully it'll all all work out. We're going to wing it and we'll hope for the best. One other thing, we will try and be live streaming all the daily Masses as we've been doing and try and live stream uh, one uh, Sunday Mass in English and we have to work out if we can do it also in Spanish. Uh, The TV station will continue broadcasting at at least uh, least one of those two times, 10 o'clock and two o'clock, at least into July until we discuss what more we might need. But uh, but for the time being, it will stay the same. But one thing is we, uh, uh, we've ordered live stream, permanent live streaming equipment for the church. Something uh, was, you know, an idea we already had along the way. So that people who even, regardless of the coronavirus, people who are stuck at home ill or homebound or whatever, can see Mass in their own parish. And uh, so that will be installed in the next few weeks. And we'll be using the equipment we have here. But just so you know, we're moving to the church. Everything will be in church. And so... Uh, I'm not sure how to say this nicely, but this here in the chapel, what a nice intimate experience. Everything was the intimate experience of a weekday mass in the chapel. Even our Sunday masses had that same intimate experience, but we're moving into the big church. The camera will be far away and the uh, lector will be farther away and the musician will be farther away and the priest will be farther away. So it may take a little adjusting to, but we'll we'll all get there together. And uh, I think that's enough for now. So stay tuned. And before the closing, uh, the final blessing, we'll say Pope Francis' prayer to Mary. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that at Cana in Galilee, 
we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. for others.